you know. And then the dude finally came, he finally he paid him. You know, he came and told the rich dad, he was like, man, you're not paying me enough, this slave labor, all the type of stuff. And then, so he was like, I'm glad you came and told me that because by you telling me, I see that you're thinking now. So the process of, you feel me, me, me teaching you about the power of money is working. So he was just like going off and the rich dad was telling him, like the people that work for him, they either, they either satisfied with the way The creative process to the mixtape, well, basically I, I prior dropped the tape in February, you know, it was like, you know, just a bunch of recordings, I didn't really know what I was doing, I just, it felt good, so I did it, and then I started actually getting into the production of my music, and I started, you know, looking through the beats, learning the process of how to make a beat, and then over time making beats, I found something that instantly clicked, and some beats they grew on me, so then I, I just started writing. And then once I started writing, then I, I made more beats after I was writing. And then the, the beats that I made after I started writing, it was like easier. I, I knew what kind of flow I was going with, the concept of the tape and everything like that. So, you know, I just was writing and it was just clicking, it was clicking. And then I finally had to, uh, my my engineer that I was working with, he branched out to me and he gave me some, some good studio hours for a good price, you know. So I went in the studio with him and he kind of taught me how to actually mix and master stuff. And he was just like showing me the ropes of the, you know, the engineering process. And Cause I also want to learn that too. So basically he, we were just in the studio and he was just telling me like some stuff that I was doing. It was like, well, maybe you need to do this. Maybe you need to do that, say it like this. And the whole time of me recording with that engineer, he kind of helped me understand music a little bit better. And he, you know, my recording process is different. And just the way you think, the way I think about music has been different since the whole experience. Cause you know, when you actually make your own beats and you chopping samples and just actually getting into it and make everything feel more alive. But when you just get a beat from somebody and you rap to it, it's just like, oh, okay, well that's all you could do. But once you start making beats, now you can make beats for other people. And if they like your sound, then your sound could get around and then you might be the next best producer. You never know. So. I just, I just like having fun with the music, so I just went on and head in. My style, well, my style developed over, I, I, I listen, I used to listen to a lot of Wale, so I mean his like poetic, his poetic influence was like super deep in my, in my style, so I, I was like, well, I don't want to sound just like him, like some people say I sound like him on my first mixtape. But like, I'm not trying to sound like him, but I want to use his poetic, the way how he put his words together and like the poetic influence he had on me. So I put that in and then I, my favorite rapper is Jetty Kiss and like when he raps, he just like connects with the people like, like word, every word is like it's a connection with people. So I'm like, okay, well, I want to be able to connect with people the same way he connect with people because he has a song with Anthony Hamilton, it's called Why. And it's like what he was talking about then is relevant to what was happening now so i'm like that that longevity how how he just said it back in those what 10 i don't know how long ago was, about 10 years ago whatever and it's still when i listen to it today it still gives me the same feeling like when i listened to it 10 years ago and it's still relevant so it's like i mean i put the poetic influence and i tried to make stuff that that'll last and put it all in, in one style and then me making my beats, like I said, it just it developed a flow, so it was like, you know, it all kind of clicked together. And then Kanye ended up dropping Yeezus, and I listened to, I ended up listening to Yeezus like every day, and just the way how he put just different, just like, he was just super creative, and that's something you never heard, but it sounded like you heard it before. And it's like, I want to be able to put all the, the Wale poetic, the Jetty Kids longevity, and the Kanye West creativity, and just put it all together. And then no, and then don't cuss at the same time, so everybody can listen to it. So it's like you know, I want to be able to, I want to be able to make music for grandmas to listen to, and for grandkids to listen to. So it could be like a family experience when you listen to it. You don't have to worry about listening to guns and all the drugs and you know, just like stuff like that. So I just try and keep it, you know, ready e for everybody, but still it has that that message that I'm trying to get out, that positive message to 
people. So when they, when like kids growing up listening to it, they don't be all like, oh, I gotta have my pan sack and I gotta have a gun, I gotta pop a molly, I gotta do all this type of stuff. And then you just listen to it and be like, oh, well, he's talking about some life experience. So maybe if, if, I, if I make music or even if I just live in regular, maybe I could go off some of the stuff that he's saying and, you know, kind of live my life like that and just have my own, cause I'm my own person anyway. So just add my twist to what kind of what he's saying and make a lip. What inspired me to start doing music? What inspired me to start doing music? Well, when my grandpa died, Nora Spencer, uh, he he passed away. He passed away about, about I say about six years ago, I believe. But uh, like I, I felt like I was missing something. I didn't have like I didn't. It was a part of me missing, and so it was like well. I don't know what to do, and one day I was just laying down on the floor, had my computer, and I found out there was a recording program called GarageBand on my computer, and I was like, I, I was just playing with it, and I found out how to record, and then so I ended up, uh, like, it was a beat, it was a Meek Mill beat, the, um, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, and then I was listening to it, and I was like, man, it just feels like, this feels like what happened to me, so I ended up just, I rapped to it, it was like a freestyle. And then I showed my friends or whatever, and they was just like, man, this is raw. Like, I, I feel what you're saying. And I was like, for real, I was just, just going off the head. Like, I, this is how I felt. I was crying and everything. And then I, I kind of, like, you know, left left it alone. I thought I was going to be a basketball player, go to the NBA, all that. You know how that go. But over time, it was like the music just kept, it kept coming back to me. Like, whatever it was, something always happened to where, oh, I want to do music. The feeling's always there. So I was like, man, maybe I need to go get me some equipment and try this music thing out. And I tried it out, and ever since then, it's like, man, I fell in love. And then I listened to Bob Marley, and his music is like music. So it's like, man, like this, this actually could be something. I could actually make a living off of this. And even if I don't make a living off of it, I can inspire people to want to live to this. So it's like, you know, it just kind of, it kind of came to me. Yeah, I'm sorry, straight gas. The only crime I ever committed was being black. You see, I'm sorry, straight gas. Future projects, well, uh, me and my bro Toda, you know, we got a collab tape coming soon. You know, we ain't no rush on it, you know, we just living right now. You know, we, we link up, it's gonna be all good. Uh, maybe sometime this year, I'm thinking to drop in the third installment of our collection called Practice, because you know, practice makes perfect. But you know, other than that, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to learn the actual, the, the science of music and actual creativity because People are making music nowadays and they like just trashing the art. And me being a person that likes to create, and art art is like my second love. So it's like I, I'd rather find a way to build the art back together, you know, and, and then make music after. But right now I'm just chilling, learning the art and creating. On That's my all. Dexter. <laughs> yeah. First, the first collab on the tape, I, actually my, my little bro um, S, shout out to S, uh, he was supposed to be on the hook of the two minutes and that's um, that's my, that's, that's like my little cousin right there and he, he helped me actually write the song, so it was like, uh, like when we was just, we was making that song actually he like helped me write the hook and for him only being in 10th grade, it was like dang I just, he only in 10th grade and he made the song sound better than what I could have made it sound by myself, so it's like well, hey man. That's that's perfect right there, and it's just showing like how the young minds think already. Like in this new the new generation of people is like they just they're super creative because everything that has already happened is just like all coming down to each each of the new how can I say this? each of the like all the the young the young kids basically are getting inspired from everything that's already happened, and everything that's already happened is pretty much legendary. So if you get inspired by something legendary, it's only helping you to create. And uh, was a uh, Hollywood Friends, that was my uh, my cousin, my blood cousin, first cousin, we had the same grandpa and everything, same grandma, so uh, like, and my cousin was in jail, like the song, it's called Kids Plug Your Ears, and it was like, you know, he in lockdown, it's like, he like my brother, but he's my cousin, and it was like, uh, you know, he called me up one day, and we was just talking or whatever, and I was like, man, I'm about to drop a mixtape, I need you to just tell these people something, man, cause I know you got something to lay off your chest. So he like, basically let off what he had to let off on that uh, the second track of the tape and it was like a, uh, what he was kind of saying like I, I felt exactly what he was saying it was like but I wasn't really trying to cuss on the tape so I just let him 
say it. And so he was like my alter ego in that sense. So I was like, yeah, that was, it was perfect for the tape. And on the, the actual song, Hollywood Friends, he was uh, Reese Boyd, which is my, my blood cousin, his brother. It was like uh, it was like a perfect it was a perfect match because I was gonna have somebody else do the verse, but it was it only made sense for me to put my actual cousin on the on the song. So it was like it made it like that. Well, to me at least, it gives it that family feel because you know we he been he been making music since he was about my age and he been doing this. He got songs out, whatever he's been doing his thing, and it's like it was only right that I make a collab with him. It's my it's officially recorded. We in the studio. Why not make a song with your blood cousin that actually knows how to, you know what I'm saying, spit some dope lyrics. So I was like, you know, for the Hollywood friends, more mo most part, the most important thing for me, it was like that, it was like that, that, that family bond thing. So I was like, you know, I was like, man, this, this right here is like one of my favorite tracks. So I was like, yeah, yeah, this is so all blood. And uh, what up, what up, what other songs? Um, Diane. Oh, oh yeah, Diane, Diane, man. All right, the story behind me and Diane. All right, so all senior year we was we were talking about making a song, and it was like uh, we just never had the like the resources to make a good song because I know she could sing like her voice is beautiful, and I didn't want to like record it on low quality and then it sound dumb and then I like downgrade her vocals and somebody hear it and they like oh she's mediocre, so I was like man, and then when I finally got some studio time I called her up I'm like man I got this song I wrote it. Every like everything is written out. You don't have to write anything. You can just come sing it. And then she's like, "All right, just send me the beat." I sent her the beat, and then she was practicing for a couple, for a couple of days. And then we ended up we went to the studio, and then um, she came in, and the way she sung it was actually different than what I thought. I thought she was gonna sing it like how I how I said my hook, but just sing it. But she added her own little twist to it, and it was just like it was like perfect. And then the part uh, she was like. Uh, Still with a fracture heart, ooh ooh. I had told her like before she did the ooh ooh. I was like, you should add a ooh ooh in there, and then she added it in there, and it was just like, man. And then uh, uh, the engineer was looking. He was like, man, she could really sing. And then she came out of the uh, she came out of the booth for Corey and whatever, and then she was like all happy and stuff. And I was like, see, I told you, I, I knew, I knew you had it in you, whatever. And then we ended up naming the song Catharsis, cause uh, Miss Jones, our our English teacher, she like she just gave us all these big old words and stuff, and then we was like. We we always end up having to go look what it is and stuff like that. So we was always like, oh, if we make a song, we're gonna name it Catharsis. And then we ended up making the song Catharsis, and it was just like, man, it was just like that was the song. It was meant to happen. So it was like I had to do that. And then the, um, the being black, it was uh, my 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 friend from KNO, Drico. He uh, like I've been knowing him. We played t-ball together, whatever. And I had I was in my backyard and I was writing to the beat. And then I had the, the on site thing, you know, they made that song on site. That was a classic. So, you know, I was like, man, if I if I could revamp this and put it in a in a, in a different perspective, because they were talking about what they was talking about, and I wanted to put it, say the same, pretty much the same thing, and just put it how I, I wanted to talk about something like how, you know, like when you, when you live in black, you already got a strike against you because of your skin. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just being black. I don't care what, what anybody has to say. I'm going to just do whatever I want to do and make it how I want to make it. And then so I ended up calling him. I was like, man, I need you to lay this hook. I got it written, you know what I'm saying? I just need I just need you to lay your vocals on it. And it's just going to add that butter to it. And that, the day that they ended up coming to the studio was the day me and Diane was in the studio. And then so we was recording it. And then um, Diane ended up, I ended up saying, I was like, Diane, you should, uh, you should like add your vocals with his and make it like make a different type of sound. And then you got K&O and Diane's like, K&O, you know, they on side, straight gas. And then you got Diane, just that beautiful voice, and you put it together on the hook, and you looking at it like the names when you read it, you like, that don't. I wonder what that sound like. But then when you hear it, it's just like, that that sounds how it's supposed to sound. So it was like perfect. It was perfect. Like I don't know. It was just studio time, perfect collaboration. And um, the last was the last, the Negro Boy. Oh, uh, that it was me and my partner Jr. I, I was uh, this when I was making beats on my Garage Band. It was like simple beat. And then I made the beat, and then I went to his house that, I went to this house that next morning, and he was like, bro, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta add something to this beat. He's like, bro, don't add nothing. And I'm like, it sounds kind of plain. He was like, bro, don't add nothing. We could write to this right now. And then so we ended up writing and recording it, but we recorded it on like some low quality stuff, so we was just listening to it. I'm like, yeah, we gotta record this high quality. So I, I ended up going, I ended up going back 
into the program and no actually I lost a foul to the beat so I was like damn we can't record it so I had to make the beat over so I had to I, I was like alright since I can make it over I'm gonna make it sound how I really want it to sound and then so I, I kind of put some kicks and stuff into it and I sent it to my partner JR and he was like no I'm not I'm not feeling that one just take the kicks out and just leave it so I just enhanced the clamps with like a tambourine and stuff and basically that that song it was just like me just expressing myself like all the way to the fullest level is like I didn't I didn't want to I didn't really want to rap like just crazy full spit it twist it and get it blah, blah, blah. so I was just like you know I'm gonna just sit back and just think about my life and everything that I've, that I've done and why I'm making music and stuff like that so it was just like I, I was just writing it and then his verse what he wrote I didn't I didn't I didn't know what he was writing I just seen him writing his he was just bobbing his head like a heart I'm like dang I hope his verse not better than mine. So I was like, and then he ended up recording it, and I was like, dang. And then he was like, uh, everything pretty much what he says, like, I, it feels just like me. And the uh, part, he was like, uh, he was like, baby girl, we could do it. Come here, let me rub your feet. I'm weak for your love, that is. And to them baby fathers, love your kids. That part, that part was like something I, I wanted to say, but I didn't know how to say it. And then he ended up saying it, and I was like, bro, that's exactly how I feel so it's like dang so it was just like a perfect it was like a perfect just it, everything just all the collaborations pretty much was like perfectly aligned like they didn't I didn't force nothing it just kind of all came to me so it was like well this is what I need and I didn't I didn't want to get too many um too many like rap verses because last time I had a whole bunch of rap verses and I some of the verses could have got cut and it was just like, you know, I, I wasn't feeling it, so I kind of just pretty much let everything flow and let it come. And like some of the beats, I got I got a beat from Toda, you know, that, had to, that, that, was a, that was a classic beat. As soon as he sent it to me that day, it was a while ago, he sent it to me that day and I ended up writing to it the same exact day because the sample was just like, man. And I, I was like in a, um, I was in a relationship, whatever, you know, things didn't work out. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then like the sample basically told me like it told me the relationship without even having no lyrics to it. So I was like, dang, the sample could just sit as the 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 part of where the relationship standpoint of it. And then what I could talk about is be like when I come on, it's like been a long day, it's like but leading up to that, it was like, man, all this stuff all this stuff didn't happen. So let me just sit down and just I don't care about anything right now. Let me just write. I don't want no hook on it. I don't want no like you feel me, I just wanted to just flow where it could just like it could just go through like you don't have to go and then repeat and then go and then repeat it was just like a just a progression all the way through the song and it was like man I was like this this right here I, I gotta use it the B is awesome what I was saying made me feel like I, I had a long day and I just sat down got off work you know so it was like man it was like a, uh, you know it was just one of those you know you get a beat and you just it instantly connect and my um my friend Don Solo, he he sent me that the catharsis beat. He sent me um, he sent me a while ago, and I, it was lost in my computer. And I used to every day I used to try and write to it every day for about two months straight, and I ended up falling asleep to it. So I was like, man, like when am I when am I ever gonna write to this beat? And the verses that I used were like the original verses that I wrote when I first had the beat, and I was like, nah, these not good enough. And then so I went over it, and I went over the verse again. You know, I rewrote it. And tried to you know fix it to it so it could sound how I wanted to sound and it was just like when I when I actually read those verses and then heard the beat it was like yeah I'm gonna just use these I'm not gonna make no new ones because if I make a new one it's not gonna be that same feeling or experience that I had when I wrote these two because I was in a certain mindset so it was like like that the what the beat it, and it's, it like the beat is like it's like a dreamy type beat or whatever I guess you could say and that's why I used to go to sleep to it and then when you hear the song. And for a girl, for a girl to listen to it, it's like, all right, most girls around, you know, like 20s or younger, they they didn't been through relationships, they got cheated on, you know, whatever. They thought they they thought they were the most loyal, whatever case is, whatever. And I wanted to make it from a guy standpoint, but also to where a girl understands, like, okay, well, dang, that's why he cheated on me. But it's like it's not necessarily that he cheated. It's like he was just growing up, so it's like, or right, when you listen to you, like, okay, that that was wrong, but I see where he's coming from, cause he, you know, he he's just getting older. All right, whatever. And then the B is make you like, so if a girl listen to it, she just put it on, and listen to it, like, okay, and then make you kind of like relax and sleepy. So it was like, I guess that's why I kept falling asleep on the beat. So it was like that. That it was like a, 
you know, it was just one of them that it was like the feeling. And then the, um, the being black, the being black beat, it was a, a, my friend JR, he, he called me one day. He was like, bro, I just, I just forwarded you these emails. This email from my friend, he makes beats. He's got like heck of beats. We might have to get on like, it was like, it just said track one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And then I, I was just going through the tracks. And he was like, you got to get on track number three. I'm like, all right, yeah, we could do it. And I ended up clicking track number four. And then it just had that. It was just live. As soon as I clicked, he was like, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, what the heck? And then I, and, tra and four is it's crazy because four is my favorite number. And I was like, damn. Or I was like, yeah, I gotta use that, and that's the the one with the uh, K and O and Diane. So I was like, yeah. So pretty much all the all the beats that I, that weren't mine were like beats that I either I had or I, I just got. So good. Like an instant connection. Stand packed and keep your head up, bro. Love you. Do I feel like I'm at a disadvantage by being where I'm from? Mm. Truly, I, I think actually where I'm from makes an advantage because most people. They they come from like you know like a a cool background or like they their city has like a like a music they have people from from their city that's on with music or that's doing something good with music I mean we have E40 we have Mac Dre you know but it's like that's pretty much it as far as like the the main like as far as like famous for music or whatever you want to say but it's like so me having my my competition is is Mac Dre and E40 in, in my opinion. From being from my city, and E40 is like you know he's a legend. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm better than E40 or anything like that, but you know it's like he's pretty much the only one that I'm I, I'm comparing myself to from my city, cause it's like he made he up he been on songs with top people and all that stuff, and I'm just still working in my city to try and branch the whole like everybody so we can all open it up, and then they be like oh well Vallejo they got nice music, so it's like. Pretty much the, the advantage from being from where I'm from, Vallejo, it's like not too many people have done it. So it's like when you actually doing it and you know that you kind of on top of it and you know you got friends that's pretty much on top of it and you in your city, it's just only a matter of time until you, you get recognized and you know if you pushing hard enough and everybody supporting everybody, it's like anything can happen. So I just take it day by day. I'm in love. It's just an I saw, and I saw. I feel like the, the music scene in Vallejo. I feel like it, it needs it needs to pick up, but I mean, for right now, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. But uh, I think it should be like a more like a more positive like a positive vibe, because I mean, in the last what month or so, how many? I don't know. I don't know exactly how many people died. But it was like about eight people that died, and not that much of a big time gap so it's like why keep making songs uh, that about oh shooting him trapping getting him robbing him all this type of stuff and you got people in the same neighborhoods that we talking about all this stuff in and they dying you going in the house people laid out on the floor dead getting killed in front of king's supermarket like you feel me like why would you want to keep promoting violence if that's what's happening to our people and they like I'm, I, I'm not saying it's directly my cousin, but it's like, that's like our cousins. We, we from the same area, you know, we grew up together. And somebody that, the people that, the people that are getting killed, we are, we know at least one person in their family, whether we know it or not. We do know, it, no matter if we know or not. So it's like, I mean, I, I'd rather, I would like to see Vallejo's music get more positive other than like the violence that they've been promoting lately. So it's like, you know, that, I mean, it starts with one person, so I'll figure it. I start off and maybe people follow the lead. If not, I'll just keep pushing. Came a long way, thankful for 18 years of age. Some stuff I ain't did cause I fell a victim to procrastination. Now it's time to make it cause I got a gift to prove. Had to get a mic so I had to stop buying tennis shoes. I mean I get a few just to go to the lab so I could feel fresh. Still blessed and kick some raps but it's deeper than that. A little closer to life. He tried to run once for his freedom. He got beat more than twice. Some people got beat for a life didn't get to sleep free at night. Some nights I get high and rewrite thinking if I live that life how would I make it out? Even the police now Days trying to take you out. Ain't they supposed to make you safe around? 
man, and if I'm wrong, I know that I seen right, the battle wounds on the dog, remembers his last fight, something you may never understand, it's coming to vain, from a boy to a man, Lil Brody have a plan, so you can know where you're at in life, and I'm a rep impeccable, even after the afterlife, you know that time, when you make yourself mad and realize that you did it, that feeling, yeah, this that, Junior. Junior! Man. It's been a long day trying to find an open page I ain't wrote on before Can see things I ain't never spoke up before Underline me if you quote Don't take me as a joke when I slay like dose Like gay nice quotes Hold up, let me switch it up Trying to live it up Lil Brody, what, well, what? Well, you ain't real cause you being tough Bruh, bruh, being real's taking care of Loved ones, I'm a rhyming She the beat, she give me high like weed When I turn it up a little, my vibe in D Cloud 953, free tone, free D